three words. Heavy Metal 3. Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Mike. Um, I just wanted to talk about Heavy Metal 3 a little bit. Uh, Kevin Eastman said in an interview just a, uh, I don't know how long ago it was actually, but um, he talked about Heavy Metal 3. <coughs> And I don't know how many of you out there have seen Heavy Metal 1 or 2. Um, Heavy Metal 1 was made in 1981. Um, it was a cartoon, basically, and produced in Canada. I want to say the first one was, but it was done by Ivan Reitman. Um, it was pretty cool. It's worth checking out if you haven't seen it. Um, but then they made a second one, and that was in like 96 or 98. Um, in the interview that I'm going to try to put a link to, whichever way that is, um, <clears throat> He was talking about that one in that Paramount Pictures picked that the rights up to do that and to make it and uh, he went to a Canadian group to have that made. Um, they kind of muscled him a little bit into saying you know what they wanted done or whatever. So maybe if your opinion is that the second one wasn't as good, he shares that opinion too and he, he honestly just says it sucks. I don't know if it sucks. I thought it was pretty cool. They had Michael Ironsides doing voice in it and uh, his wife, uh, Kevin Eastman's wife, um, Julie Strain, you know, was did the voice in it, and I don't know, it was pretty cool to me. Um, maybe not as good as the first one, but you know, whatever. Anyway, <clears throat> um, uh, Kevin Eastman, who is who is a creator of co-creator of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, is also the owner, current owner of Heavy Metal Magazine. He picked that up in '91, I think, is what he said, and um, worked really hard to get the rights to the first movie, uh, Heavy Metal the 1981, um, produced on, on VHS, which he said was the sixth top selling uh, VHS in 1996. Um, so that's kind of cool. It just shows that the popularity of that movie. Um, but now there's a third one. Um, and it's at least in the works. David Fincher and Kevin Eastman have come together to try to pencil this, you know, a script out, come up with something kind of fun. And um, if you don't know Dave, David Fincher by name, You'll know him from Fight Club, and you'll know The Curious Case of Benjamin Button is something he worked on. Um, so they went back to Paramount Pictures, um, and they optioned this as a movie. Well, Paramount Pictures tried to, like, really strong arm uh, David Fincher when he was working on Curious Case of Benjamin Button. They wanted it shorter, and he didn't. So they said, well, you know what? We're just forget it. We'll go to somebody else. And they went to Sony. And Sony quickly picked up that, um, picked up the the option to do that. They got James Cameron aboard to help produce it. So hopefully with if Avatar is a successful movie, um, then it'll add to James Cameron's our you know credibility already. And hopefully this you know this heavy metal three will really take off. Um, some directors, if you if you haven't seen the first one, then you have to understand that the first one was broken down into little stories that related to an overall theme. And this third one will be the same way. Um, some of these directors that have expressed interest, uh, usually ones that are really into fantasy and have known the, uh, the product line or whatever, um, have expressed this interest. And Guillermo del Toro from uh, Hellboy is one of them. Zack Snyder from 300 and Watchmen. Um, Gore Verbinski, who did Pirates of the Caribbean. Unfortunately, that's all I know that he did. Um, and there's been rumors that Rob Zombie could be one of these guys and also Frank Miller. Um, I would be excited to see Rob Zombie, you know, do some. That'd be cool. Um, also, the popularity of Jack Black is going up with Tenacious D, and uh, I don't know if you've seen Year One, but that was funny too. Um, Jack Black um, has that new move, that new video game coming out. And darn if I can remember the name of that. But anyway, um, they've got him on board. Hope, uh, rumor is that they got him on board to add some of his comedy talent along with Tenacious D. So I'd like to see that happen too. Um, the, uh, it's going to be fully animated. It's going to be computer generated though. It's not going to be old school animation like it was in Rotoscope and all that stuff. It's going to be uh, computer generated. So they got Blur Studios on board to basically animate this, uh, this movie. If you don't know Blur by name, you'll know them by doing the NFL spots with all the, you know, like quarterback, you know, football guy. Um, Ultimate Alliance, the video game for that. Um, and they've done a, a slew of other things, and they were uh, nominated for an Oscar. Um, so, you know, it just shows how talented they kind of are, even if they didn't win an Oscar. I don't know if that was, you know, <laughs> something to bring up. But um, anyway, the other thing that's exciting that Blur Animation Studios is working on is The Goon, which was a, a comic by Dark Horse. <clears throat> so all these, these 
elements make up for a really exciting uh, uh, you know, idea or moment where we're going to have a cool, hopefully a cool movie's going to come out. You know, it's going to be, you know, off the hook. Um, some things that if anybody's a fan of uh, cartoons, comics, or, you know, heavy metal in particular, I'm kind of curious, uh, do, you, do you wonder who might do the voices for it? I got some ideas. I'm thinking Ron Perlman because he does uh, voice acting work. He did it for the Conan uh, uh, video game, and he's done it for a cartoon that hasn't come out yet. Uh, only been three years in the making, um, and also um, Mark Hamill does a lot of voiceover work, so it'd be kind of fun to maybe see him do something too. Um, if you have any other ideas or you know any comments, you know please leave them in the down below, and um, you know please subscribe, rate my show, and uh, I'd like to hear what you think. So thanks.